<gasps> she actually is letting me do the intro. <laughs> She's actually told me lots of times, hey, you're doing the intro. And then as soon as the my camera goes up, whatever, she starts the intro. So, howdy. Welcome to Family History Fanatics. This is our bi-weekly, bi-weekly live stream. Is that Every what two would weeks. Be? Would that be bi-weekly? I don't know. Ask the crowd. I think it's bi-weekly. <laughs> um, as opposed to die weekly, which would be every half week. I thought bi weekly was twice a week. Ooh. <sighs> bi week. No. And he's no, because if you get paid bi weekly, you're paid every two weeks. Okay. So we have it from the crowd. <laughs> bi weekly. All right. That's fine. <laughs> but we are here to talk about all things fun genealogy. And if you haven't already, be sure to like this video. If you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. That is absolutely free. And that way your videos might actually show or our videos might show up in your feed. And if you want to become a member of FHF Extra, it's just $2.99 a month. There's the join button. Where is it? Right below here somewhere. <laughs> just look around there. Um, and with that, you get access to our bonus live streams. There's not one today. Nope. It is in two weeks, as well as monthly webinars and the whole backlog of webinars and other stuff for members. So, um, the topic of the day. The topic of the day. See, she has to remind me because I don't know what I'm doing. The topic of the day. It actually, you know what? I want to do. I want to do two things first before we get to the topic of the day. Uh oh. So first off, if you were watching the intro and you saw pictures of our fans going through those. Most of those are probably several years old and some of you might be on there. Um, we would like to get those updated. So if you would like, get your phone, okay? And turn around and take a selfie of you watching the show and then email us. And where do they want to email us? Um, it's in the chat. It's in the chat. And But if you're watching the replay, go to familyhistoryfanatics.com slash contact. Send me an initial email. I'll reply to you, and then you can attach the picture that way. Oh, they have to do something funny, huh? Well, because when I edit off the first 10 minutes of the live stream, that takes the chat away. So it's in the chat if you're watching live. But if you watch the replay, then go to the contact form. That will get you into the email. I'll send you an email. You don't want to just give them our email? Not really, no, because there's a lot of scammers out there. And oh. I'm really sick of answering. Oh, them. that's true. I keep on getting bills to my email that I know that there's no bill supposed to come to because that would never be used for bills. Um, so that's the first thing mm -hmm. um, is, is update the pictures. The second thing is... Uh, our family is actually taking a vacation this summer. Mm -hmm. And so if you live in the Netherlands or Northern Germany or Denmark or Malmo in Sweden or Finland, and you would like to meet us and you happen to live close to someplace on our itinerary, or you want to show us a cool thing about your town, um, you can email us also um, and uh, we'll we'll get in contact with you. And Just do it at familyhistoryfanatics.com slash contacts. You won't need the follow-up, but we'll follow up with you. We'll follow up with you. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or Belgium. I forgot Belgium also. Yeah. We're going to Belgium. Now, to the one thing that I'm, everybody can help me pray. You can put prayer hands or something in the comment section. I contacted the um, pastor of the evangelical church there in Gullersheim, Hanover, Germany. Um, that's what it was historically. It is not Gillersheim, Hanover. It's something Lower Saxony, I believe. Anyway, I reached out to the gentleman in charge of the church, and I'm trying to get him to validate that the records I have saying my ancestors were from Gillersheim before we head on this adventure to this town in the middle of nowhere, Germany. Um, so put a little prayer hand, say a little prayer, do a little rosary, whatever you do to try to get good vibes coming your way. Um, I really hope that he'll respond to me. So we don't go to church. That I don't need to go to, but it's an ancestral homeland visit to the church that I believe my second great grandfather's wife, Caroline, that her family is from. So that's what I'm hoping for. Anyway, if anybody has ever had success reaching out to places saying, hey, I want to come visit. I just want to validate it. And you have some tips and tricks. Let me know as well. All right. So now on to our topic, topic of the day. Do you have slides? No. Oh. And yes. 
<laughs> okay. Well, our topic is shocking family discoveries. That is correct. Is that for this one? That is this one. Oh. Oh, so you've paused it, so it's not live. That is correct. So we could do a live one and play it, and it would be us within us within us within us. It would like be that. Let's not do that. Infinite mirror effect. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to start with my shocking family stories. And what was interesting is that. Oh, real quick. And if you do have shocking family stories to share, <laughs> you can put it in the chat. That's right. You can. Um, I was hoping to have him in the comment section so you can write the whole story, but that doesn't go live until after the replay. So if you're watching the replay, definitely use the comment section. In any case, so my shocking story, um, what was interesting was when I put this question out to the community, somebody says, I, I don't know what you mean by shocking. Well, <laughs> shocking can be like, <gasps> or it could be, oh, um, I, I didn't know that. And mine falls into an I didn't know that. And it's not really a DNA question. So let me slide this over if you see comments or whatever. You need to hit the little star button as we're going okay. through. So I can tell the story and you can watch. Anyway, Sorry. So <laughs> we should have done that in advance. So what happened was I was visiting the Columbus Metropolitan Library. And I was going through their entire collection of Franklin County, Ohio resources. I was in Ohio. I wasn't going to be in Ohio for another year or two. So I said, all right, why don't I see every resource they have for Franklin County? So I took the entire section off the shelf and I had hours to myself and I had a good time. So I opened up the guardianship index that they have for court records in the late 19, no, the early 1900s, late 1800s. And I started looking for surnames. I was just casually browsing. Well, all of a sudden I saw this surname Brown and I thought, oh, I know Browns are my family tree with the surname Townsend. I thought, uh oh, my grandfather's father is Sherman Lewis Brown and his wife is Emma Virginia Townsend. Let me go take a look at this entry. As I looked at this entry, all of a sudden my mother's uncle gene so sherman and emma's first son eugene was listed as being adopted by sherman and emma i was totally confused i had never heard this so i called up the youngest aunt so my mom is, was deceased at this time and so was my grandmother so i called up the youngest aunt that's the one i was staying with she lived in ohio said uh have you heard this story before she said uh no okay um her mother was adopted so adoption is not taboo in our family so we're sitting going okay um so then we called the oldest aunt so her sister my oldest aunt said hey did you know that uncle gene was adopted she's like i no <laughs> nobody heard about this so then they called their first cousin who is the daughter of the next oldest son harry uh, so their uncle harry they called her their daughter her daughter his daughter ugh, can't get the pronouns right his daughter and said hey did you know and now that's their shared uncle gene was adopted she's like oh yeah We're like, um i've been talking to you all this time and you never once mentioned that gene was adopted like how did you know this she's like oh yeah my dad told me one time blah 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 so all of a sudden it is tied to dna i never saw any matches for dna but i always assumed it was because he never had any children well um even if he had children there wouldn't be any dna matches because he's adopted so that was a kind of a shock to us and it came from records so your shocks don't always come from dna so that's my story you're sticking to it. Well, I still haven't resolved it. I need to get into the court records, the guardianship records, to, because the names were in the transcription, but I've tried to do Google searches to find, or not Google, genealogy surface searches on all the websites for the two names of the parents, and I'm not getting anywhere. So I need to get into the court records. Um, but that's when little man has graduated at five and a half years on my bucket list to spend a few months in Ohio. He doesn't have family there, so I don't know what he's going to do. But I'm going to spend a month or two in Franklin County going crazy. No, right. That's my story. Okay. <laughs> so I have a DNA one then. 
Do you have a DNA one? Of course yeah. you do. So this was this was actually about. It's the vampire. No. No, not the vampire. Because no. we've mean, already talked about that. That was just interesting. <laughs> uh, I mean, sort of shocking to find out that hey, yeah, your your ancestor was a vampire that was sucking his blood, or at least that's what the newspapers said. <laughs> newspapers would never lie, even back in the 1800s. Um, no, this was this was about four or five years ago. I had a DNA match contact me. Actually, he tried to contact my dad, but since I manage his account, the email went to me and says, hey, um, I have this match here and it's, you know, this really close match. Um, I've been looking to find out who my father was and I think he's related to you. And so uh, I went in and, and looked at this match and it's. Uh, it was a. Um, which relationship do you call that? A quarter relationship. So to my to my grandmother. So that would mean that, you know, it was either a, obviously he wasn't the grandparent and he probably was not the grandchild just based on age. In fact, I don't think it's possible that he could be the grandchild based on age, but uh, there's the half sibling. There is the niece and nephew and the aunt and uncle is probably out too. I'm, I'm almost certain the aunt and uncle is out as well. So then I, I went and, uh, you know, looked at some others and, and narrowed it down with, with my grandmother's family. And I actually made contact with him and actually talked with him on the phone and, um, you know, told him what I knew and, you know, some things about his story checked out as far as where he was told his father was from. Now he was told that his father was in the military, you know, was passing through, um, which since his father is related to my family and I know which of the three men it could be um the uh, military part is wrong uh about, about that but this was a completely unknown relative an extremely close relative and it turns out that that uh my grandmother had a couple of sons that this could have been this gentleman's father or it also could have been my grandmother's father that um had this other child later on in life and uh the problem is is we didn't have anybody from those two lines that attested to help us confirm which one of these three it is and so uh he stopped calling and talking with me after about six months and so it still remains a mystery um that we have this family member out there that we don't know exactly where he fits in but we got a really good idea of where he fits in that's right that is correct. All right. So I'm going to load a couple of um, submissions that came in before the week. Keep your comments coming. Um, they're kind of fun to read, but I wanted to share, give homage to those who um, submitted their stories in advance. Let me go ahead and add this to the stream real quick. All right. So this one comes from Andrea Johnson or Andrea Johnson. She is on our email list. If you are not getting our email reminders on Monday, Wednesday, or Friday for this channel or Thursday for the writing channel, be sure to take advantage of the links in the description box. It will take you to the resource page. You'll get a free handout as well as sign up for the email list, or you can reach out at um, familyhistoryfanatics.com slash contact and say, please add me to the reminder list. Monday tells you everything. Wednesday is a DNA reminder. Friday is the live show reminder. And then Thursday is the re reminder for the writing. So if you are getting none or only some of those and you want to be on the list, then be sure to sign up. So let's get into Andrea's message here. And she says, oh, I moved it. What did I do? Let me go back. I was trying to move it so I could actually see it and that didn't work. <laughs> My great third great grandfather is James W. Thurston. Nearly everyone online has his parents as Peter Thurston and Sarah Malik. Peter Thurston and Sarah are actually his grandparents and the person most believed to his, be his sister, Harriet Rowe, is actually his mother. 
Both his death certificate and obituary state that she is his mother. His obituary also provides the names of his half-sister. He was found on the census with his grandparents because they raised him. And I'm looking for his father with the help of my second cousin. Now, how many of you have run into situations like this where initially you think a set of parents are the biological parents only to find out that through cultural norms, whenever a um, single woman has a child, the family suddenly has a new child that becomes a sibling to the child that had the child. <laughs> so the grandparents that are now the parents of Brackard and in the community. Um, and so that was shocking for her to find out. It was, could be a shock to the family, but we can see that that is the standard of the cultural practices. So shocking doesn't have to be some egregious thing. It could be like, oh, um, hmm. And then you can also learn about the history and the social context in the time in which your relatives live. And that makes for a great story. So that's another plug for the Write Your Family History channel if you haven't joined that just yet. Okay, so story number two is from Andrea, is another one. In the same line, his great uncle Peter Thurston was murdered in 1907 in Indiana. He was almost 60. One of the headlines was Murder Ends Feud. I okay. would think that that would actually continue the feud. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, the whole point of a feud is murdering each other, isn't it? So. True, true. And um, one of the things that I like is that she's a newspaper, something I'd love to teach about on this channel. And another plug before we continue is my Roots Tech presentation about newspapers will be available later this month. Or not this month, because this month is over after today. But in April, my newspaper uh, webinar will be available for Family History Fanatics members. So if you haven't joined, that would be good. So continuing with the story, go ahead and read, dear. The rest is pretty gruesome. The simple cause of death was that he was jumped and stabbed numerous times. I picture it as a sort of West Side Story family feud with all the singing and dancing. <laughs> As it was said that the deceased son was interested in the murderer's daughter. That sounds like West Side Story. Although this was a, a brother's. <laughs> However, he denied the interest to the press. And the article states, Melvin Thurston, a son of the dead man, testified that he invited Charles Lowe and Clifford Breeze, Breeze is the son of the murderer, to go into a field and settle their differences with him. It turned into a huge fight. One headline read, 100 witnesses call. Oh, wow. The accused Clifford Breeze told the judge and jury in court that Peter Thurston cut himself. Unfortunately, <laughs> he was found not guilty by a jury. The press at least was shocked. I think I have about 10 newspaper clippings. Wow. So, so this didn't really end the feud. It sounds like this feud continued between the sons and stuff. Well, I I would think that it would continue the feud. You like sure. knocking my face off. I, I do. I do. There's going to be some new scenes that I can make later, but I haven't done that yet. <laughs> okay, so another one. This is from Suzanne. Okay. Oh, she's on, actually. Yep, she, she is, is on. She actually submitted a few, and I'm only going to highlight two. And the first thing I want to highlight is a comment to find shocking. How would you define shocking? Whatever you want it to be. Mm -hmm. um, something that you didn't know that you basically, you know, oh. Yeah. Um, something unexpected, bother positive or negative. Something unex um, something that turns your tree upside its head. So, so, for instance, it was sort of shocking to find out about my great-great-grandfather, who um, was this vampire, and also uh, died in a prison break, and served time in both the Nevada State Penitentiary and the California State Penitentiary. <laughs> and after a while, anything else I've learned about him is not shocking at all. Not anymore, no. You know, it, it's not. And we um, have a very dark sense of humor that we're laughing about it. We call him the vampire. Yeah. So one thing to be said, so I talked about this on how to write ethically. There's a free webinar over Write Your Family History talking about writing ethically. And the further back in time you go, the more easy, the, e the more easy, the easier it is to tell some stories because it, it, sadly, many of us will just laugh at it because it's ironically funny. It's not like, you know what I mean? Well, like take, take for instance, my grandma, probably many, many people's grandma, you know, 
little old lady cooks food for her family, goes to church on Sunday. And not saying that my grandma was, but if you found out that she was actually some big mafia, you know, <laughs> Don in the background, pulling all these strings on organized crime or whatever, it's like, that would be shocking. Um, for a lot of people, finding out that you're adopted. If you've, if you've lived your whole life and so maybe you're 20 or 30 or 40 and you find out, oh, I'm, I'm adopted. That's not what I was expecting. Mm -hmm. um, or Larry Jones, that's a good case. Oh, yeah. Where, hey, he knew he was adopted or he found out he was adopted like in his 20s, which was a shock. And so he started researching this family and done all this research. And 10 years later, he finds out, oh, yeah, but that's not your actual biological family. It's, it's really else. this other one over yeah. here. So we did a video about that. Um, and so if you haven't watched that, you should be able to find that on our channel. Just type in Family History Fanatics and Larry Jones in the search field, and then the video will come up. All right. So let's go back to Suzanne's comments here. And she said, I'm not sure the type of shocking discovery that you're wanting. We're not. We just all, it's all relative, right? But you know that I got the shock of a lifetime when I learned that my daddy wasn't my biological father. Now, I'm glad that she shared this because there are a number of people who are discovering the shocks of a lifetime. Oh, she just added real quick. She was 53. Oh, so, thank so you. So just think about this. This isn't like, oh, okay, you're a teenager or a six-year-old. She's lived half a century. Right. That's like the gentleman who came into the family history library back in Texas. You had the same situation find out. His mom was about to pass away and he's in his 50s. And she said, oh, by the way, your dad isn't your dad. <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> um, so, so yeah. And, and I think it's important that we use tact and grace when we deal with individuals who find out that shock because... Many people with DNA are finding out who their relatives biologically are not who they thought they were. But I hope that people are finding joy and grace and realizing the people who did raise you, especially the ones that you loved enough to call mom, dad, sister, and so forth. Family doesn't have to be biological. Family can be adopted. And for me, I have a lot of adopted brothers and sisters around the world and we don't have any genealogical relationship. So I hope that if you do find this kind of shock, I hope that you do uh, have some peace after you handle that initial, <gasps> what the heck? And if you have any tips or tricks on how to handle that process, be sure to leave them in the comment section after this video ends so that others, people who do find that shock, can learn from you in how to handle those situations. Sorry, I was marking several. No, you're fine. We should probably move this right here. So you that said as you wanted to do just one computer today. I did. I did. And we're doing just fine. Okay, so here's <laughs> another one from Suzanne. Let me bring it up. Okay, let's go have you read it. Okay, just a second, because I got to get the comments down here so that we mm -hmm. can see new comments if something's really there. Um, oh, one quick, one quick thing. Suzanne said, Daddy wasn't my father, but he will forever be my daddy. I'm just glad that he didn't have to endure this discovery. Oh, he might not have known. Wow. That, that would have been shocking. That, that would have been shocking as well. All right, so let's go to this other story. All right. Most everything regarding my paternal family. Do you know who this is from? This is from Suzanne. Oh, this is also from Suzanne. Yeah. Okay. Most everything regarding my paternal family is a surprise to me, uh, as we've found out one already. <laughs> I have found conflicting maiden names for my patrilineal great-grandma. The cemetery lists one maiden name. The other things list a different maiden name, a variant of her stepfather's surname. My father, uncle, and I have matches to descendants of a man with the surname listed on the cemetery records. So I'm going with that thought to try to figure out this puzzle. The man lived about five houses away from my great grandmother, mother in the 1900 census. Good, good sleuthing there to find a location proximity. The three of us are a match to this man's grandson. My grand, my uncle matches the grandson at 157. My father matches at 114 and I match him at 60, which lines up with, Hey, this, this close relationship. If this matches grandpa is the great grandfather of my father and uncle, second great grandfather to me, then the match would be a first cousin once removed to my uncle and brother and a half first cousin twice removed to me. And the DNA supports this with those numbers. Yes. Another high match supports that my great grandmother was not the daughter of her mother's husband. 
DNA indicates that the mother of one of my highest matches is a half-sister to this great-grandmother. The rest of the family may already know this secret. I don't know, but being a newbie to the family and not <laughs> no one really talking to me, it will be an adventure for me to pin down. I like this part. I'm new and nobody's talking to me, so... <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that the truth? So what stood out to you from this story, dear? Well, the one, I like how she's she put this puzzle together. You know, she started with these two names mm -hmm. and she had other records that were more leaning towards the one name. So why not look at that name first? Um, and found out, hey, there's this guy that lives five houses away. You know, whenever a baby is made, Two people have to be in the same place at the same time up until about 1979. Um, after that, we can do other things. But up before then, you need to have some proximity. And this is great as far as showing, hey, there's this proximity here. There you go. There you go. All right. So we have two more and then we're going to get into the chat. And this, um, <laughs> these ones are fun. <laughs> All right. Um, I discovered that not only was one of my maternal great-grandmothers born before her mother married, but so was her mother and her grandmother. And she wrote this as a blog post where she talked about all of these ladies um, and them having children before they're married. And I like this part. Let me try to zoom in a little bit because the font is really small. Um, and she said, the next time you're stumped by what appears to be a brick wall in your maternal line, I'll try to zoom in one more time. That's probably as good as it's going to get. Um, consider the following. Was the mother married when the baby was born? Could that child have been registered or baptized under the mother's maiden name? Are the names in the family that correspond to those found in earlier records you think might be relevant? And so that was really great tips. I'm going to... Make sure I copy this link. It'll be in the chat and later we will put it in the comment section so you guys can check that out. Um, but she said, then there's the fact that my maternal great-grandmother went to jail grandfather. twice. Grandfather. Grandfather. Oops, sorry, not the mom. Usually when you're going to jail, you're talking about the men. You're not talking about the women. Although. It can't happen. It can't happen. But I've been talking about all these ladies. It was hard to switch. Okay, so my maternal great-grandfather went to jail twice and that his father was well-known rabble rouser involved in the early union movement in England. All things we never knew and certainly surprised <laughs> my mom. <laughs> That's pretty neat. That is neat. So um, talking about it, relatives that go to jail or rabble rousers, that was actually another little surprise that I found. So I was using, I believe it was genealogy bank. So when you're doing newspaper researchers, you can't just use one platform. So I was using Genealogy Bank and um, I typed in the last name Geisler and I came across a story about um, George and William Geisler and their brothers. Now, the family story is those two stopped being allowed to associate with each other because when they got together, they got in trouble. That was a family story. Well, sometimes family legends actually play out. Because these two gentlemen had gotten so drunk and caused so much damage that they were arrested. And then they were giving community service to pay back the damage of their rabble, rabble rousing. And I think <laughs> shortly thereafter, the wife said that they couldn't be together. <laughs> so it wasn't a shock, but it was kind of, I know, dark funny. <laughs> All right. So. Here's the next one. And I do have to do a little bit of a warning. For those of you longtime viewers who may have watched a video about why genealogy is not the most popular hobby, and it is not searched more often than a certain adult entertainment, we like to call that entertainment chess pawns. And for those of you who are Family History Fanatics members, you have this chess pawn emoji that you can use right now. We are about to use chess pun when we talk about adult entertainment so that this video does not get banned from YouTube. If you have small children in the room, you might want to either pause this video or you might want to just skip ahead for just a little bit. All right. You've they been can't warned. skip ahead. Well, oh, the, replay. the replay people. Because like, this is live. They can't skip If ahead. you're watching live, your children need to leave the room. Okay. Let me give you a couple more seconds. If you're watching the replay, 
either make them leave the room or just fast forward a little bit. All right, you've been warned. And you're not showing the website, right? The website link. I, I no, no, no. Okay, here, Teresa, she gave us such a great story. All right, Derek, you get to read this one. I guess the most shocking thing I discovered is that my second great uncle moved to Paris from London, took a pseudonym, and began publishing chess, chess pawns pawn. and classical literature and selling the books via catalog. He became quite famous, knew Oscar Wilde, and would have faced prosecution in England had he returned. I guess they weren't that keen on the chess pawns in England. <laughs> Probably not. But in Paris, they were okay with it. <laughs> Scholars today still study him and or make reference to both him and his backlist. One of his nephews moved to France to work for him. <laughs> Followed him to Belgium, where he was temporarily banned from Paris. Well, okay, so wait a second. So if Paris is allowing this back at this time, and now you have to move to Belgium because Paris is saying, hey, it's gotten a little out of hand. Uh -huh. That's got to be quite the back catalog. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But remain there even after Charles returned to Paris. I collect information about him and hope at some point to write about him more fully. And just so you know, she sent me to a link that talks about it. I'm not going to show you the title. Um, the link is up there if you're really interested, but it says notes on an old bibliophile. Um, and he's not quite a bibliophile. No, he is. It's just a certain Try. class of uh, bibliophile. Bibliophile. <laughs> so, shocking. Um, you know, the one thing I liked about that one, the why we brought out the chess pond ancestors that we have, is everybody who's involved in the chess pond industry has relatives. And whether you support or don't support their activities, they do have family members. And it is important to, we don't have to be graphic <laughs> in what they did, <laughs> but we should be telling their stories. All right. So now let's turn our Let's turn our attention to some of the comments that you guys have left. Okay, those two go together. These two go together? Uh -huh. Yep. Okay. So Dr. H.H. H. Holmes is registered as America's first serial killer after he confessed to murdering over 20 people in his infamous Illinois hotel in the 19th century. I remember there was a, what was that history podcast? That we used to listen to. We listened to the Jan Carlyle. No, 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 no. And the History Chick one. The History Chick one. But ones. it wasn't the History Chick. It wasn't chicks, the History Chick. But it was chicks. the History Chick. But they, they did all sorts of weird ones and they talked about this hotel thing. <laughs> oh, what you weren't told in history yeah. class. Was it? No. Something along that line. Okay, maybe. Because it was a whole, it, well, that's the one I listened to. But it had the two girls? Uh huh. But it didn't start as the two girls, Holly and I uh, can't remember their okay. names. Anyway, I remember listening to one about this hotel. Uh -huh. So this is a distant cousin, not the birth name. And it was uh, around the Chicago's World Fair. <laughs> and if I remember right, this was like a really weird hotel. Or maybe that was a different episode of some other building in, in Chicago. But yeah, serial killers in Chicago. Gotta love that. <laughs> okay. So another shocking, and I like that she's putting it in quotes because... What's shocking to people today is not necessarily shocking to the people of the past, right? And so we need to be very careful about presentism, um, something I also talk about on the Write Your Family History channel. So I think the most shocking discovering is confirmation that my great-grandmother was living with a man that she was not married to in the 1950 census. How many of you are finding shocking things within the 1950 census? I'm not finding shocking things in the 1950 census. Um, but I will tell you, I know a lot of people were excited about the 1950 census, and I was, but it took forever to get my special census report for my ancestors to come out because they weren't in the register style. And it took forever. And then when it finally came out, I didn't care so much. <laughs> I'm like, it's about time. Anyway, and then some of the details was great, but it I don't know that the form was all that better than the register style information before. And it definitely took away the neighbors, that information that I like on previous censuses. So that's my experience. So, so speaking of, of census, and this is a, mm -hmm. this was a shocking story. This is one from Tammy Hepps that I think you can read about it on her website, or at least she gives presentations about it. But she had she found out that one of her relatives, ancestors, was a census worker. This was back in 1910, 1920. I can't remember which year. Um, and so she thought it would be interesting then to go and and figure out what um, 
little district that he was a centrist worker in and look at all the census, you know, stuff or something like that. And, uh, and I'm telling the story wrong. I know I'm uh, not shocking at all, but in her research, things weren't lining up. Mm -hmm. And so she was looking back at the census before and the census after, and she came to the conclusion that this guy basically made up 80, 90% of this district that he was a census taker in. He probably started in one area, realized it was the wrong part that he was supposed to do, got behind and, you know, hey, you got paid by how many names you did. And so we made up a lot of names. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so there's some families in, in what, the 1920 census or whatever in this little town in Pennsylvania that never existed. But, you know, if you looked at the census, you would never know that. All right. At 57 years old, I discovered my dad is not my dad. And my mom had a moment with her first cousin. So my parents are also my parents. I'm still, but she said, my bio, mom and biological dad are also my cousins. Yeah. Families. What are you going to do? Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, my grandmother was adopted, but no one knew her who her father was. I found him in... At, at least, least four, four names that he used. Oh my gosh, that so, is frustrating. So is this? Is I guess I guess Bob maybe can elaborate. Is this like he had four different families type of thing, or is he just had different aliases? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Bob, you're gonna have to follow up with us. All right. My uncle was told that he that who he thought was his daughter was not. 40 years later, I took a DNA test and surprise, she came up on the site and indeed is his daughter. Oh, that's a happy shock. Well, yeah, but that's, that's also a 40 years, though. I know. You're living with this and you find out that, oh, nope, that was just wrong information. Yeah. That reminds me of all the, you know, like Maury Povich and who's your daddy? That isn't your daddy. It is your daddy. <laughs> All that crazy stuff. Oh, that's so sad. 40 years living a lie. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, yeah, Marianne Brown. Oh, oh you got yeah. Okay, Bob, we're waiting on your other comment. Go ahead. Okay. I have a great uncle that shot my great aunt and left town, but she didn't die. And he was arrested <laughs> in jail for attempting murder. That reminds me of this article I found in a newspaper that... Um, on a death certificate, this man was listed as murdered and the newspaper article came out and it was about a woman who was home alone and this guy tried to break into her house and she shot him because she wasn't going to let him break into her house. And so basically the story said, good job. <laughs> anyway, sorry. I thought that was funny. Okay. Here's Bob's follow up. Uh, he moved on and changed his name along the way. Maybe only two marriages. <laughs> only two. And he'll put it in the comments later. So those of you who are watching the replay, you'll get the whole story from Bob. Thanks, Bob. All right. I appreciate it. I wish that the comments would work during the live show, but apparently not. Okay. Uh... Okay, which one do you want to do next? Uh, let's do uh, Found by Chance. Oops, this one. Is my great, great, great grandfather, third great grandfather, really a brown? Came to the U.S. in the mid-1850s. DNA matches from his descendants, but none from his ancestors. <laughs> Strong matches to Tim's and Pittman families in England. Okay. That sounds like possible. He changed his name for some reason. Mm -hmm. He changed his name? Or who you thought they were related to aren't related, aren't related to. to. You've got some mysteries there. That... I'm not, I don't envy your work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I just noticed yesterday that my grandpa's birthday was April 9th. Says his parents were married November 12th. <laughs> it happens. I'm yep. sorry. I just saw that one. And so I just popped it in out of order. Okay. In 2017, I discovered a niece wasn't actually a false alarm back in the 60s. I was the one to tell my mother of this possible pregnancy. She took off and when she came back said, nope, no pregnancy. Okay, wait a second. I was, I discovered a niece. Oh! oh. So they had oh, the baby and took the baby away okay. from her. Right? Yeah. Barbara, do we have that me. right? Um. So this niece was actually her sister, yes? Or her half-sister at least? 
I discovered a niece. Okay, let's see here. I discovered a niece. Oh, uh, maybe. I'm not sure. So we don't know how to read this, Barbara. Can you give us a moment? I mean, can you give us some more clarity? I know you don't have very many characters in the chat, which is why I was hoping the comments would work, but give us some more clarity because that's a little shocking. I will keep that safe. Okay. Um, so Stacy says, when I come to Franklin County, Ohio, I can come and visit her. She's not in Franklin, but I could say hi. You know what? Five and a half years, we'll talk. <laughs> It's a long way to wait, but your kids will be good, bigger. So one of the things I love about those who come often to Family History Fanatics is I get to know a little bit about you guys. And I really do like meeting up with folks. I met up with some folks at Roots Tech and it was really funny because a few of them are like, you're going to talk to me? I'm like, heck to the yeah, <laughs> of course I'll talk to you. I mean, as long as you don't call me late to dinner or just call me other mean names. Yeah, I'll stop and chat. So anyway, all right. I was trying to give um, Barbara... No, the parent was my brother. Oh, okay. So again, yes. Yeah. So there was still. So let's go back with that context. So read it again. I discovered a niece. So the daughter of the brother, right? Wasn't actually a false alarm. Okay. Okay. So I was one to tell my mother of the possible. Okay. So she knew something or saw something or heard something uh -huh. that. The brother, brother... had an in liaison with a female. The female took off and. No. Yes. The she. The, the she mother. Took... Isn't the mother the she? I was the one to tell my mother of the false pregnancy. She took off. And when she came home said, nope, no pregnancy. Okay. So, so the mother knew. Uh -huh. It sounds like. Uh -huh. But the, the child obviously was not in the home. Uh -huh. Because the child was the niece or the daughter of the brother of Barbara. Yeah. Are we getting closer, Barbara? I, feel, I think I'm getting closer. <laughs> it's, it's still, it's like, yeah, that would be a little shocking. My DNA results changed my tree because my grandfather was not my grandfather. I now have to search for Constantino. My maiden name is Betts. How fun it would have been to be a <laughs> Constantino all of my life. Trade, trade your surname for a better surname. <laughs> well, that's what I did when I got married. I that's got why I was Geister. laughing because it's like, <laughs> I like my last name now. <laughs> After I found my bio family, found an article about my bio grandfather being arrested for murder, about fell out of my chair. Uh, yeah. When we come across those things, we do. There's, there's a lot of murders sure. and a lot of uh, obviously finding out a family member that you didn't know about or, or that, uh, you know, you were adopted or something like that in this shocking thing. <laughs> so I just from in general, going back to what somebody had asked at the beginning about, you know, what do you find shocking? It sounds like people find a lot of the similar things shocking. Yeah. This. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. I'm just... That's okay. All right. So my great grandfather's brother and his wife and two young children were went all in the early 1900s. Huge court case. Lots of info in the newspaper. Very sad how they reported the crime as so detailed. Oh, oh that breaks my heart. Those kind of stories break my heart. Um, grandfather has a nephew. The nephew would have been born before any of his siblings married, but I don't know who the parent of this nephew is. So the female. Well, it doesn't say necessarily. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, oh, here's here's one that's going to be more and more relevant. <laughs> you get <laughs> as, to read that as one. As time goes on, yes. <laughs> my cousin made a donation to a reproductive health center circa 1986. We have found five of his children so far that were the result of his donation. I was shocked when first seeing the DNA matches. Yes, there will be more and more of those. And So we need to be careful and not assume people are philanderers. Certainly not after uh, donations of that thing started. Yeah. But how would you know if it's a philanderer versus a donation? I do not know how researchers are going to figure that out in the future. It's interesting because you're you're talking about privacy in the donation sense because these people are given privacy and not to be released. But you're also talking about privacy in the, well, the philandering by default is private. Um, there's usually no records of it. Um, so, yeah, this, that's that's going to be something that is interesting to try to figure out over time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... So, oh, ooh, 
Speak of me. A certain uncle remarried before his divorce was finalized, and he abandoned the first family. The reunion 50 years later was intense. I bet. <laughs> and I'm laughing at the part about the intensity, not I'm laughing at divorce and stuff or the bigamy part. I just, I, I is it Elkie? Is that who he has to say? Um, I love when people's phraseology, some other people were talking about, I like your idioms. I like your phraseologies. To me, the 50, it's just so deadpan funny. I like it. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. I don't want anybody to say, you're so insensitive to laugh at divorce. No, I'm laughing at the light last sentence. <laughs> at the family reunion. Yes. I bet that was intense. All right. What are you doing? Uh, well, I keep going back to you see. You got to do that while we're going. Otherwise, yes. there's a pause. I, this live chat is the highlight of my le week. I love all the stories. Me too. Now, I do have an idea. Um, oh, see, I was waiting for this. Um, but anyway, uh, if you like this kind of show, then when the comment section goes live later, so I can see it later, make some suggestions of some fun submissions that you guys could enter in and we can interact with. Um, maybe weird articles or strange places that you found things or really weird gravestones. I don't know. Put some kind of suggestion in the comments section. So when we stop going live, wait for the comment section and put your idea there. And um, then we can have another one of these fun weekends together. All right. All right. So we're going to go over Barbara's story in detail now. She's broken it up so we can actually see it for real. All right. So my brother was away at school. Okay. That makes sense now, as far as the age time frame. And called and told me, notice told me, not her, his mom or yes. her mom. Yeah. And he thought he and his girlfriend were expecting. So I'm guessing your brother was wanting you to provide some advice. I So this is the 1960s also. I told my mother. So she went to where my brother was living to deal with the situation. This was in the early 1960s, and when mom came home, she told me that it was a false alarm. However, in 2017, through DNA, I learned it wasn't a false alarm. And here's the happy ending. I've met her, and she is the baby sister I always wanted, Aww. and we have a great relationship now. So after 50 years, 57 years, she got her baby sister. Aww. That's, Aww. that's pretty cool. That's awesome. All right. So leaving the happy story... <laughs> Here's this one. Second cousin, three times removed, went to prison. I think that's prison for bigamy. His grandfather let Napoleon go. <laughs> and this is a question. Oh, we'll that's skip that for right now. Um, another shock for me was finding a slave owner in the family because, and here's the why it's shocking. My family is very Northern Ohio, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts. But this was a branch that went out west, Kansas, I think. So yeah, yeah. So I know I have Canadian ancestors. I have Ohioans, Pennsylvanians, New Jersey, and Kentucky. Now the Kentucky so far, I haven't found them being slave owners. But but I think I think I think I finally found. This isn't shocking, but for me, it's exciting. I think I finally found a link to a patriot ancestor. So I might have to work on an application for GAR. I know I have a United Empire Loyalist ancestor, but that DNA one was shocking for Kentucky. But being from the North, I just always assume there isn't going to be slave ancestors. Or I have German immigrants to the in the 1830s, 40s, and 50s. They went to the North. They typically didn't have slaves. So yeah, this whole I can understand why you'd be like, whoa, wait, wait, we're from the North. Hmm. There you go. All right. See, I went and started some stuff while you were talking there. That that's good. Okay. So just so you know, it is stuff you missed in history class. Yes. Yes. That's the podcast. If you if you want to learn interesting things about history, that's a great podcast. Just go back to the very beginning of it and and watch or listen to it from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then eventually you'll get to Holly and the other girl. <laughs> <laughs> We're forgetting their name because we haven't listened to it so long. Um, just so you know, we aren't going to have time, I don't think, for any DNA questions because they're off topic. So if you do have a DNA question, come back in two weeks. I think we're having a DNA topic and we'll address it that week. Okay. Found out my third great-grandfather killed his six-year-old daughter in 1888 
during an episode of Delirium Tremens. He was sentenced to be hung, but it was commuted, and he ended up getting out after 10 years. What is Delirium Tremens? You're going to have to look it up. Okay, Louise, you need to tell me what Delirium Tremens is. You can't throw out words like that, not explain it. I'm, <laughs> I'm guessing it was like temporary insanity, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, because... Yeah, I want to know about that. That's still shocking. Oh, that's sad. That makes me cry. All right, here's a fun one. Found some gun runners involved in the rebellion of Upper Canada. Rebellion of Upper Canada? What the freak? I don't even know there is a rebellion now, of Upper Canada. You've got to you've got to educate me again on which is Upper Canada, which is Lower Canada, because okay, opposite. so Upper Canada, upper Canada is, is south of the the flow of the uh, Saint Lawrence River. So while so the Saint Lawrence flows into so while upper, you would think would be upper, upper it's, really, it's lower, really lower, and that's really Ontario. It's really Ontario. And if I'm wrong, correct me, but, but and it's And lower confusing. Canada is more Quebec? Yes. Okay, so lower Canada is Quebec, upper Canada is Ontario. Because the St. Lawrence starts in upper Canada. But if you goes... look on a map, upper Canada is lower than that's lower correct. Canada. That's okay. correct. But I didn't know they rebelled up there. There was a rebellion, huh? You have a rebellious people in Canada? When did that rebellion happen? Because because if you're using the terminology Upper Canada, Lower Canada, Canada became Canada, Canada in like 1870 or something, right? I don't remember. I don't have my timeline. I always have a cheat sheet for this stuff so, because it's confusing. Yeah. <laughs> but that's cool. Gun runners, yeah. You know, because I find it cool and I start it because I'm like, wait, there's a rebellion in Upper Canada? What the heck? I have to go learn new things. So thanks. Thank you for teaching us some history lesson. Um, not that one. Sorry. Sorry. We'll have to get you next time. A young man matched my DNA and he is not in my tree. I dug and I believe his mom is a result of my uncle having an affair with the neighbor lady. Oh, Oop. Neighbors, they can be problematic. Neighbors, the mailman, the Xerox machine fixer. <laughs> I know that was a little specific. <laughs> oh, oh, they defined the GT. Which one? Down, 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 down. Remember? Delir it. Alcoholism. De yep. So oh, detox from alcoholism withdrawal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's got to be frustrating. So withdrawals, meaning he's temporarily sober or trying to be sober. Yeah. Oh, that's got to be heartbreaking. That I would think that would lead to even more alcoholism. Yikes. Okay. So my husband's, did Elke just have the last one that was the mm -hmm. neighbor? She's got some great ones here. Um, Elke, if you're a female, I'm saying she. If you're not, then I apologize. My husband's second great grandmother had an entire family with the border while her husband was at sea. So. You know, my grandmother took in borders during World War II and she had my oldest aunt. And so far there haven't been any other offspring that way, but yikes. <laughs> You want to read this one? Started research looking for both grandparents since neither of my parents knew them. Well, found out my dad was not my <laughs> biological father, also raised with only two sisters. Well, now I have possibly six more. <sighs> so you've got a bigger family than what you were expecting. You know, I this is going to sound odd, okay? So when my brother and I took DNA test, we joked, what if we're not related? <laughs> Well, we're fully related and we can't disown each other. But sometimes I wish that there were other mysterious cousins or mysterious um, siblings. Just because I had that small family problem we talk about here on this channel, it would have been nice to go, oh, I have more relatives. I mean, yeah, it might have been frustrating or sad, but I don't know. Maybe I'm weird. I always wish I had more family. That's why I go ahead and just adopt people. What do you got next? I got more. Okay. All right. Uh, my great, great, great grandmother. Oh, killed. This is a grandmother, not a grandfather. Yeah. That's why I said, Ooh. killed one of her children oh. after one died of illness. Oh, she was placed in an asylum in Kentucky. The name of the child she killed was passed on even to even my grand aunt. 
So that name of that child lived on. That's good. Oh, but that's so sad. I mean, and you could kind of understand because you had talked about uh, the vampire mm-hmm. and how a traumatic event started triggering down a life of crime. And so you can give a little grace and understanding like, ah, oh, she she was grieving and then it just got worse. Oh, that's heartbreaking. All right. So talking more about family killing other family. <laughs> Not that that's funny, but it is. Well, I, and I'm just going to get so bland blasted for laughing, but it's the way you said it. Family killing other family. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I found that a distant cousin killed her six-year-old daughter because she was paralyzed oh. and wanted her to have a better life, according to the newspaper article. She ended up having more kids. So I'm guessing this is the distant cousin. Uh-huh. She ended up having more kids. Huh. Wow. I don't know how to respond to that. I really don't. See, I was trying to get to the happy ones to end on the happy, shocking ones. <laughs> but it's not working out It's not that working. Way. Everybody's dying and killing each other. Okay, so on well, with we this. had the chess funds earlier. Maybe we should end Maybe with, we that. Should start with that. Save them. So best. put happy, shocking stories in so that we're not like depressed as we end. <laughs> and we're, you know, just using our morbid laughter to cover up, you know, the tragedies. But here's another tragedy. For me, the most shocking story was five siblings and a sister-in-law all oh. die the same year in a cholera pandemic. That's sad. Yeah. Mm. Mm. All right. Let me let me see. Okay, we've got all the delirium. Thanks, guys. Oh, so this was this was the distant cousin that killed. Follow up from from Michelle. I'm not sure how much time she served. If she did serve any time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah. she had more kids. Um, I learned that I descended from slave owners too. I thought our family was always too poor to have slaves. But at fourth grade grands, they owned plantations. Oh, wow. So you had a family then that went out of favor, I guess, down south. Mm-hmm. And so uh, you didn't think that that was possible. Mm-hmm. Not shocking, but my great grandfather married his sister's maid or housekeeper. Their oldest was conceived before the wedding. You know, that reminds me of a lot of the historical romance novels set in the early 1800s of England with, when they talked about the common practice for the lords to uh, play with the staff. <laughs> And that's probably an inappropriate term, but I don't know what else to Play say with to the be staff. G- <laughs> G-rated. <laughs> they, 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 but sometimes it was consensual, even there was a power imbalance, but sometimes it wasn't. <laughs> okay. My mom asked before she died to research if her maternal line's biological grandfather actually died following a bank robbery. Oh. Family story not often mentioned was he died falling off the getaway car. Oh, dear. Go oh, dear. Well, Andy has to bail, which means I have to bail tune. I hope you guys had a lot of fun today. Um, if you have shocking stories or, and remember, shocking is defined how you want to be, uh, define it. Surprising, unexpected, unusual, different than what in- anticipated or totally changing your family tree. Make sure to use the comment section. This is going to end real soon. Use the comment section so we can actually read the content. So as you saw earlier, a quick summary sometimes does not help us get at the truth. And um, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Also suggest other fun topics that we can talk about family stories in our family tree. We will see you next time. Bye, guys.